Hi my fragrance friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. I always appreciate you. And you're probably wondering why I'm in separate clothes if you watch part one. Well, guess who did not have the second part of their recording actually record? This person right here, this this girl right here. So this leads me to having to re-record it. Um, and actually now that I'm actually properly timing out the time, I think there, I'm just warning you guys now, there might be a part three because um, I don't want to hold you guys up longer than 30 minutes because I know for me personally, my attention span kind of fades around 20 to 30 minutes. So there might be a third part to this. Um, yeah, so without further ado, we're just going to hop right in. Okay, so first one up here, um, before I rudely cut myself off in the last video, after, the, oh, just to remind you, so the last one that we talked about was Sharaf Aswad. I'm Sharaf Aoud Aswad. Um, that was the last one we talked about before I really cut my own self off. So highly, highly recommend that one if you like uh, darker um, bahuri, um, and there's also leather in there, scents with rose, highly, highly suggest that one. Okay, so the next one up we have from Ajmel, we have Rosewood, and I was put onto this one by, um, I, I'm not sure what her actual name is, because I don't think she ever said it, but her channel name is A Fragrant Glance, and she did a whole review on this, and I absolutely fell in love with this one by the way she described it. And I blind bought it, as I buy, as I do with most of my fragrances. Um, but this one is called, again, Rosewood by Ajmel. And this is one of the higher ends of Ajmel. Oh my god. So let me tell you, with this one, I had a very emotional experience. You know how some things, I mean, objectively, this is good. This is rose and wood, and I believe there's saffron in it. And it is beautifully composed. It is very sophisticated. It is a darker rosewood scent. So it's not, I mean, you can wear whatever you want, but I would highly suggest you keep this for the evening time. When I first smelled this, I was literally stuck for 15 minutes. It evoked such powerful memories in me from growing up that it literally made my eyes water. And that's the beautiful thing that I love about fragrance, that you never know what it will trigger in you. Good and bad, right? But let's hope majority of the time it, it, it's a good trigger. But um, yeah, I, I was literally stuck for 15 minutes. Just, just wow. Yeah, it's, it's literally like memories. Not a particular memory, just like memories in general, like a time in my life. Um, and it's not because of this scent in specific, like this perfume, this bottle in particular, but it's the comp composition of the way that the rose and the saffron and the wood is done in here. And I think there might be amber in here too. Again, I'm just smelling, telling you what I smell right off the bat. And it's like, uh, it's, it just made me emotional and I find that beautiful. Sometimes I think, not sometimes, no, actually it is sometimes, sometimes fragrance, becomes a deeply spiritual experience for me. And this is something that triggered it. So I highly recommend this is again on the higher end of Ajmel. Um, so it's a little bit more ex um, expensive for Middle Eastern fragrances, but I highly suggest it, it but it's still under a hundred dollars. So again, this is Rosewood Ajmel and I'm gonna list all the names down below for you. Okay, moving right along. Uh, this is one I haven't heard about here on YouTube either. Um, this one is, I hope I don't butcher this name, it's from Ajmal as well, but this one is called Amber Povri? Po po Povri? Oh my goodness, I'm totally butchering that, it's almost disrespectful, um, but I'm going to let you see the name here, and again, I'm going to put the names down below. Um, so it's Ajmal Amber Povri, and this, oh my goodness, this gave me a wow. I mean, Ajmal, they just hit it out the park. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so there's cardamom in here. There's, um, I believe, cedarwood in here. Um, I think there is clove in here. This is a cool, woody fragrance, and you definitely get that cardamom right off the bat. And I haven't given it a full day wear test yet, so I'm, I'm not gonna tell you about the longevity, but generally with Ajmel fragrances, it is a decent wear. And this is a woody fragrance. I can see that this would be sticking to you. It's just, this is wow. I'm just, I'm, give me one moment here. I just need a, whoa, 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 whoa. This is, I don't know what it is. When you smell this, it's almost like you're smelling cool air in the woods. It is 
it is magnificent. This is literally art in a bottle. And again, this is on the higher price of Ajmal. I think this is about 100 or thereabouts. Um, so if you like woody fragrances, you like unisex fragrances, this is like straight down the middle um, unisex. You get that cardamom and I think there's clove. Um, God, it's it smells cool, cool wood. Um, it's cool, spicy, almost like Again, in the vein, but they smell nothing like. I'm just trying to explain to you how um, Etiab Al Murshud number four. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna try to explain that it's spicy, but it's cool. This is the same thing. This is woody, it's spicy, but it's cool. There's a cold air component to it. There's nothing like that in the north. I'm just telling you when you spray it in the air, it just transports me to being in the woods. Um, again, here I go, we're being chitty chatty, oh for goodness sake. Um, but I highly, highly recommend this if you like woody unisex fragrances and it's just, Wow, this is a huge wow. Um, Amber Poivre, Poy Poy oh my goodness, um, by Edgemail. Highly, highly, highly blood recommend. Um, okay, moving right along. Another one I uh, have not seen here on YouTube, so pardon me, I apologize if I have not seen a video mentioning, mentioning it. This is Violet Musk by Edgemail. Again, higher line of Edgemail, but it's at 100 or under under 100 thereabouts. Now this is exactly what the name suggests it is, Violet. It is a powdery, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Ajmal, I mean, just stop it, Ajmal. Like seriously, you need to stop, you're taking my money. My bank called today and said you need to, you need to stop. Oh my God, this is, okay. So this is a powdery fragrance. It, ugh, just follow my train of thought here. You know Johnson's and Johnson. If you're in America, if you're familiar with Johnson and Johnson's baby powder, it was as if Johnson and Johnson's baby powder grew up, went to Harvard, and then after graduating from Harvard, it traveled around the world, backpacking through Europe, and it became all sophisticated and cool. That is this. That is this. It is a grown-up, sophisticated, dare I say, sexy. Johnson and Johnson baby powder. That violet, it is beautiful. I think there might be yellow florals or some kind of floral component to this. It is stunning, stunning. Oh, oh for goodness sake, oh for goodness sake. Yes, this is definitely a powdery fragrance. It's not gonna be for everybody. If you do not like violet powdery fragrances, stay far, 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 far away from this. However, if you appreciate musky, powdery, violet scents, you need to get your nose on this. I mean, can we just stop and take a moment for all these edge gel models that they are literally just just art pieces and they're a, a beautiful, beautiful, heavy weight. Uh, and oh my goodness, I didn't show you the tops of these. Look at that. It's like a little jewel here. And same here with the amber one. They're all little works of art, yeah? But highly recommend this if you love those violet musky scents this is exactly what the name sounds like violet musk if you love that highly recommend get this in your collection for the smell and the bottle highly highly recommend and again violet musk by edgemel okay so um the rest of this aisle is already what we covered um last week so i'm going to hop on to the next row aisle whatever um, and again, this is another one that I bought off of the recommendation of a fragrant glance. This is the Hebsafi, and I believe this is Beit al -Bukhur. Um, I think it is a sub company of Afnan. I could be wrong. So this is Beit al -Bukhur, um, the Hebsafi. So if you put that into Google, it'll come up for you. Now, this is very similar, very similar to Montal Intense Cafe. And if you're familiar with Intense Cafe, it has coffee, it has roses and vanilla. This is very similar to it, but hear me out. This is a little bit different. This one is heavier on the rose. Oh yeah, you get more fresh rose in this and way less of the coffee. First of all, let me retract that statement. So in Intense Cafe, honestly, I really don't get much of the coffee. I kind of really need to dig my, my nose into my skin to sense the coffee and like I'll get it and then I don't and then I get it and then I don't. So it's kind of like elusive coffee note and until uh, Intense Cafe Montel. I dare I say, I actually kind of prefer this one. Don't get me wrong. I love my Montel Intense Cafe. I love it. Okay, but I think I actually prefer the Hebsefi. Uh One, I think it's about the same price thereabouts. Uh, maybe it's 
Montel is, yeah, Montel is definitely more expensive. Yeah, definitely. But this is heavier on the rose. Um, much, much, I don't, I don't sense any coffee. I know there's coffee in here, but I don't sense it at all. So this is essentially a rose and vanilla, true rose and vanilla uh, fragrance. And compared to Montel Intense Cafe, this is heavier on the rose. So if you are a lo rose lover and you love vanilla, and perhaps Montel Intense Cafe was not quite hitting the spot for you, but you thought you liked it, but you never quite reached for it, get this one. The Hab Safi by um, Bethel Bokhur. And again, I'm going to list the names down below. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But again, this is a beautiful, heavy, heavy bottle. But absolutely, absolutely stunning. And definitely recommend this if you like that rose vanilla um, DNA. Okay. Moving right along. Moving right along. All right. So this one is Khaltat Al Arabiya Royal Blends from Latefa. Oh, this one. It is fruity and musky. Um, this has... Um, apple in it. I don't remember all the fruity notes yet in this, but it is apple -y. it's musky. So basically it's sweet, fruity, musky. And for me, this is pretty strong, pretty strong. Um, it's not the longest lasting one, um, but it is just really, really good. I, I, not really, it's really bloody good. Oh my God. <sighs> wow. Yeah, you definitely get that apple. You definitely get that fruit like hit right in the face right away. You get that musk. It is sweet. I love wearing this. And can we just talk about this bottle? I don't know if you guys think it's tacky, but I personally love the opulence of the gold. And yes, this is plastic. Who cares, for goodness sake? And it is superbly affordable, superbly affordable and readily available in America. Um, the last time I checked, I don't know, the last time I checked, it's still readily available. Um, but if you like fruity, musky scents that's sweet, um, this is not the strongest projector, um, not the strongest, and it's not the longest lasting compared to what you might think for in comparison to other um, Middle Eastern scents, but this is pretty decent, pretty decent. Like when I wore this, I got really good wafts of myself, so highly recommend this as well. It's whatever's in my collection here, like 98% of it, I'm going to recommend it to you. And for the exclusionary ones, I will give you that um, caveat whether or not I would recommend it, yeah? Okay, so for this one, so just know for all of these, I recommend it. But when I get really excited, I'll let you know. So this is, again, Khaltat Al Arabiya Royal Blends by Latafa. Highly recommend this. All right, now this little gem right here is from Swiss Arabian, and I got put onto this by Paulina Shar. She's another um, perfume reviewer here on YouTube. If you're watching this, you, chances are you might be familiar with her. I don't know. If not, check her out, Paulina Shar. So this one is Swiss Arabian, Seher Al Shela. Ah, oh, this one. Okay, can we just stop and just look at the bottle? Just look at that beautiful black bottle, opulent. And my favorite blue, the Feroza turquoise blue. And you have the little blue gem at the top. And this, oh my goodness. This is another deep, dark, rose scent. I think there's a wood in here. It comes off slightly bahuri to my nose. Oof, this is definitely not going to be for everybody. This, if you, you have to know you like really Middle Eastern scents. Um, oh my god. Oh, that rose, that oud. Oh gosh, is there, is there like bahur or incense or some kind of smoky, not smoky, but like some kind of incense note in here? Maybe there might be some fruits. Again, I'm just telling you, going off my nose, what I'm smelling here. This is strong. Be easy with this one, yeah? Be easy with it. Um, and it's long lasting um, on the skin. So definitely be easy with it on the clothes because whatever, whatever the time amount it lasts on the skin, it lasts longer on the clothes. And this one, I have to be in the mood for oud. As I know, it's kind of mentioned with any of my oud fragrances, I kind of have to be in the mood for oud. I just don't reach for it every day. So for this one, it's like a heavy evening scent, definitely winter appropriate. I would not, you can do whatever you want, but I would not personally recommend it for the summer and the spring, but I would recommend it for this time. Now when the air is drier, you know, and it's colder, um, I would stay away from this when it's high humidity, but this, this little baby right here will turn heads and get you noticed. Again, Sahar Al Shela by Swiss Arabian. I just want to show you that beautiful bottle. Thank you, Paulina. <laughs> All right, moving right along. And the next one, again, this is, was recommended to me, um, not to me, to everybody, for goodness sake, she doesn't know who I am, um, by Paulina Shar. Um, this is another Swiss Arabian. 
Um, this is from the Heritage line. This is called Rose 01. And as you can see, the humongous dent in here. And trust me, you don't understand how big of a dent this is until you understand how strong this perfume is. This is, she compared this to Delina. I smelled Delina years ago. I don't remember. For some reason in my memory bank, I feel like Delina was slightly creamier. This, this isn't creamy. So I just wanted to let you know, people compare this to smelling like Delina without the rhubarb note. I cannot attest to it because I, I cannot recall what Delina smelled like. I smelled it back in 2020 and I have to get it back into my collection because I don't remember what it smells like. Um, but this, oh my God. Oh my God, this is strong. It's projecting. It's like, I don't even want to spray it in the air. I don't, I don't, it's just, it's just stunning. There is lychee in here. There is rose. It's like a watery rose. It is strong. There's musk in here. If you like Delina, chances are you're going to love this. Um, honestly, when I smelled Delina, I wasn't blown away. I mean, it was nice, but I wasn't blown away. But this had me stuck. I was stuck on this. And this, I have a backup of already. And this is a ginormous dent for how strong. You don't need that much. This is long lasting. This is projecting. It has sillage. It has all the things that you want in a perfume. So Arabian is just the highest quality. Oh my goodness. And they keep hitting out of the park and they need to stop it because my bank is getting tired of me spending money on perfume for goodness sake. But this is just stunning. Stunning. When I smell this, I think of spring, but you can easily wear this in the winter because I do. I literally just wore it on, on Friday. It is absolutely stunning. It is sharp enough to cut through the cold, cut through the dry air. This is, to me, an all-year-round fragrance, and I highly recommend it. If you love rose, if you love rose, if you love rose, let me reiterate, get your nose on this. Get it into your collection. There is no debate around this whether or not you're going to like it. It's not a matter of yes or no. It's a matter of you're going to keep it in your collection forever and you're going to get backups and you're going to be like, oh my God, thank you. And just look at the cute cap. It has a good amount of weight to it too. But oh my God, just Rosa one. That's what I'm going to say. It's Swiss Arabian. Okay, moving right along again from the Heritage Collection from Swiss Arabian. Uh, this one is Amber 01. Okay, so for this one, um, I like it initially. Uh, I believe there is rose, obviously this amber. I think there's oud in here as well. Oh, okay, I struggle a little bit with this one. I like it on the opening. I do, I really, really do. But I, 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 I'm still trying to see how how maybe my nose will change before I make any final decisions with this. That's what I'm saying. There will be a caveat. If I am not crazy about fragrance, I'll tell you. So this one, love it in the opening. But on the dry down, I think the oud is too much for me. I don't know what it is. Something about it that on the dry down, I'm not, I'm not nuts about. You know, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm just not nuts about it. Like, I, I wouldn't reach for it. Again, this is heavy. Um, I would recommend this more for, like, the late afternoon, evening, night but it really, it is really beautiful. I think there might be rose in here. I, I'm smelling rose. I'm definitely getting that amber. I'm definitely getting that oud. Um, and it, it is beautiful, but I'm still, I'm kind of still on a seesaw whether or not I'm crazy about it. You know what I mean? Like it's amazing on the opening, but on the dry down, it's, yeah, yeah. I think Sahra Se Shela kind of hits that out of the park for me more than this one. But you know, I'm giving this one a chance. All right, oof, the next one. The next one, again, Swiss Arabian Heritage Collection. Um, mm -mm. This is just, whew, let me just brace myself here, okay? So again, this is from the Heritage um, Collection. I don't know if you can see the dent that I have in here. And if you're familiar with the Heritage Collection, you know you don't need that much. This is strong, it's projecting, it lasts all the things you need from a fragrance. This is it. So you can see, oh yeah, you can see that dent right there. So that's that's a huge dent. And the bottle seems actually bigger. Actually, the one thing I kind of don't like about this is that the bottle is actually pretty deceptive. And even with the Rose 01, actually you can see it better here. That actually majority of this, like one fourth of the bottle is just glass. So all of this is just glass. 
It's just glass. All of that, you only get that much liquid. Look at that. That's actually slightly irritating. I don't know if you can see that line there. Yeah, that's all glass. One fourth of the bottle is wasted with glass. Why do you do that, Swiss Arabian? Why do you play me like that? Why'd you do that? Come on now, don't break my heart. What's wrong with you? Anyway, so again, must go seven. So that's a huge dent, okay? And I have a backup bottle of this as well, must go seven. This is beautiful, musky, musky, fruity with pomegranate, juicy, fruity, musky. Oof, oof. I mean, I can't even with this. If you love fruity, juicy, musky scents, Baby girl, get this. And you know what? Men can easily wear this. This is unisex, yeah? I can easily see a man wearing this in the spring. Get your nose on this. Get your no You need to have this if you like fruity, juicy, musky scents. You need this in a collection. And this easily can go into the evening and the night because this, again, as I repeat, is strong. And have something that's a little bit more morning appropriate, but I'll get into that later. Hopefully, I can get it into it in this video. If you like fruit, you know what? Let me just talk about it now because it's a fruity, musky scent. So I would recommend this for like the later afternoon, evening. And then this is a from Latefa. This is Khalis Musk, um, Pure Musk by Latefa. This is kind of like underrated gem here. Oh, I just wanted to show you guys that little, the little crystals in here. Look at that, look at that, look at that. So I get distracted very easily. I'm sorry. Okay, so for this one, I just want to talk about the reason why I was talk. I it made me think of this, because um, it's a fruity, musky, strong scent, and that's more I think for the afternoon, evening. This is a great, bloody great morning fragrance. So the name is literally called Pure Musk. Yes, you would think there's nothing but musk in here, and on Fragrantica, it just lists musk as uh, the notes. But here's my thing with it. When I spray this on my skin, um, even in fragrance and fragrantica on in in the in the comments, somebody said that the actual notes she kind of listed out, and in the notes that it had rose in it. I don't know if anybody is familiar with this scent or you have it because I haven't really seen this too much on YouTube. If you have this scent, let me know. Do you smell fruit in here? Does this smell tart, slightly tropical to you, or am I crazy? And it's cra it's nuts because the name literally says Khalis Musk, pure musk. So you would think there'd be nothing but musk in here, yeah? No, no, no. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is some kind of fruity note in here. There's something tart, tart as in a fruity kind of tart, like slightly tropical. I don't know what it is. I love this. You don't need that much because this is really strong. Okay, so that tent is pretty big because this is, this is strong. Okay, be easy with this. Oh my God. Oh my God. It is soapy. It's clean. It's musky. But it is a happy musky scent because there's something uplifting about it. And I think I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and say, out of all my musks, this is one of my top favorites. This is one of my top favorites. And yes, I have a backup of this. It is one of my top favorites because it's so easy to wear in the morning and I don't need to think. And you don't need that much. And I love mixing this. So even though there's no fruit note in here, no tart, fruity, juicy note, but I'm telling you, there is a fruit note in here. So if you like a fruity musk and you want to try something that's inexpensive, Latefa Khalis Musk. And again, I'm going to list all the names down below. Sorry, I digressed. My bad. Honestly, my bad. Sorry about that. Okay, moving right along again. Um, we have another musk here. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to see a trend here that I love musks. And this is Al Haramain Royal Musk. And uh, on YouTube, um, I believe his name is Nas. Yeah, Nas. Um, him and his wife were reviewing the whole collection from Al Haramain, the musk um, collection. And from the way him and his wife described it, I just fell in love with it. So Royal Musk by um, Al Haramain. And this is one of my favorite colors in the world. So... It's stunning and it's a beautiful weight and the cap is gorgeous. It's just a beautiful, beautiful heavy weight. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now this, again, obviously is another musky scent. It is floral. I believe there's beeswax in here, but I don't really know how that would translate. Oh yeah, this is powdery. This is musky. It's fresh. It's clean. Oh my God, it's great. And it definitely has a floral aspect to it. I, I don't know if it's like a yellow. Yeah, I don't wouldn't think this is a white floral. This is definitely, if there's any floral in here. Oh my God, watch me embarrass myself. Watch there be no florals in here. I, I honestly don't remember. Um, but this is powdery. This is clean. This is um, 
very sophisticated. This is a very sophisticated, clean scent. I would definitely have to be in the mood for this because my inclining is to reach for the Latafa one that I just showed you. Um, but again, with these musk perfumes, you really don't need that much. Because if you're familiar with musk scents, they're really, really strong, okay? So even though there's a little dent, it's quite significant for the strength of the perfume, right? So if you don't see much of a dent, I'll ex either explain to you that I'm not really a fan of it, don't really wear it, haven't worn it, or it is strong, so be careful. Um, and this one I really haven't reached for yet because I just keep getting distracted with all my other scents. But for this winter, I would like to maybe reach for it. If not, I'm gonna reach for it in the spring because this is a beautiful powdery scent, but I'm not craving it. Does that make sense? It's a beautiful, beautiful, and I highly recommend it, but I haven't been craving it. Um, I've been craving Musk 07. Oh, did I tell you the name of that one? Oh, I'm sorry. I think I got distracted. Musk 07 by Swiss Arabian. I've been really craving that one, and I've been craving um, the Pure Musk, and I've been craving the Violet Musk. Um, so this one's been falling to the background and for musk as well for floral musk I've been reaching more for edge melon ties. So again, just because I haven't been wearing it I just needed to explain to you that doesn't mean it's not good I give a huge step of approval for this and highly recommend it if you love musky florally scents And I'm hoping that later when the weather changes again in the spring that I will definitely be reaching for this Okay, so again royal musk by Al Harami. Oh, wait, I think I'm actually doing pretty good on time. No, no, I don't think I am. Okay, so this one I recently hauled. Uh, this one is from Latafa again. This is called Kima. And one of um, the people who commented on that video where I hauled it was nice enough to put me on because I did not know what it smelled like. Because obviously, I haven't smelled every bloody perfume in the world. Um, but apparently, it did smell Carolina Herrera Good Girl years ago, but I don't have a recollection of it. So her name is Yumna Soleiman. She is uh, just... Uh, I, I, she just watched, she was in my comments, so she just watches um, um, one of my videos, and she told me that this, from what other people had said, that this smells like Carolina Herrera, good girl. I, I, I cannot verify that, I don't know, so I don't want to say something that's not true, but I'm telling you what other people are saying, yeah? Now this is a really beautiful, feminine, sexy, seductive scent. This, I would think, not I think, I definitely highly recommend this for the evening, because um, it is really seductive. Oh yeah, this is definitely a dinner. Oof, oof, this is sweet. And it's one of those Middle Eastern scents where it's kind of hard to decipher the notes, but I feel like there is some kind of fruity note in here. I believe there's saffron in here. And this is sweet, this is strong, this is, oof, this is projecting, oh my goodness. I, it is just stuck in my nose and it is amazing. It is amazing and it is inexpensive inexpensive as majority of Latefa fragrances are and this is Kima by Latefa highly recommend highly 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 if you love sweet fragrances get your nose on Kima by Latefa quickly quickly moving along uh this one is um reminiscence by is it Latefa yeah it's Latefa this is Oud reminiscence Oud Mood re Reminiscence. So this is a flanker of Oud Mood. I have not gotten my nose on Oud Mood. I know it's very popular here on um, YouTube, but I, I have not I have not smelled it. This is called Reminiscence. I think they might have gotten the notes mixed online on Vagrantica. Um, but to me, this is a very clean smelling, fresh, soapy smelling Oud. Fresh, musky. Yeah. A clean, fresh, let me just, oh yeah, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, so this is def, obviously, as, <laughs> as the name will suggest, oud. It, oof, yeah, it is musky and it is clean. So it has a powdery, clean, soapy element to it that I think that perhaps that this might differentiate this one from the original, because the way I hear people ex explain oud mood, the original, again, haven't smelt it. I'm just telling you what other people say, that oud mood is very sweet very sweet but this I think then if that's sweet then this would have to be the opposite this is clean musky unisex um, and if you like those clean airy musky scents I highly recommend this um, and you can't really see the dent I have in here because of that that um, maybe you can see it here here you go I don't know if you can it's a little bit of a dent because again this is strong this is strong please be careful with this because you can actually overspray this and knock yourself out um, but again, Oud Mood, Reminiscence, and I definitely, this is, um, I would say, uh, A-. minus. Okay, 
next one up is growing in popularity here on YouTube. This is Modest Dough by Afnan. I struggle with this one. I'm going to be very transparent with you. Um, this is similar to, I think, a very popular fragrance by Lancome. I think it's Tres Orla de Wee. I think, I think, I think, I think. If you are familiar with this, please correct me down below. I think it's Tres Orla de Wee. Um, as I was just corrected, uh, well, not directly corrected, but in a video, this is Tres Orla de Wee, similar to that. Lighter and less Swedish, kind of, I think Swedish, more lighter than Tres Orla de Wee. Um, oh gosh, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm giving the wrong Lancome perfume for this, but this is like chocolate, um, cherry fragrance. Yeah, chocolate and cherry. So here's the thing with this. I don't know. I don't haven't seen anybody else mention this. I really get a strong nail polish acetone smell that almost doesn't go away for me. Like I can smell the sweetness of the chocolate and the cherry and I want to love it so much and I can tell that it's beautiful. But to my nose, I can't get past that chemical smell. And I do what I, I normally do with all my fragrances, with the Middle Eastern fragrances, as I mentioned in part one, spray it in the air four or five times to empty out the straw to get rid of that syntheticiness. But it doesn't go away. I think it's in, actually in the fragrance itself. And I've tried it multiple times. And sometimes it does go away after 10 minutes, but sometimes it doesn't. But it does smell good. That's the thing. It does smell good. It is seductive. It is beautifully like chocolatey and cherry. It is all the things. But if you are sensitive, you might want to steer away from this because I know there's so much hype around this and there is for good reason. But I'm just telling you for me, my own personal experience, yeah, that there is this almost like acetone -y, slightly nail polishy smell that sometimes doesn't go away and I don't know what it is. So yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying. I love it, it's beautiful. Um, if you're not so sensitive, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself a sensitive person at all. I know sometimes I can kill people with my perfume, but I don't know, I don't know. I just, it, this is, the verdict is still out on this one. Okay, and another one here I have not seen anywhere on YouTube for women um, or mentioned by women because there is a male version of this. This is another modest one by Fnan. This is Un um, Femme. Again, so this is another one that I struggle with. So this definitely doesn't have that synthetic -y, like, like nail polish acetone -y thing as Modest Doe has. But this one, if you love patchouli, you're gonna like this. Now this is a rose scent. And it was hard for me to find the notes online. I couldn't find the notes online anywhere. But in the box when I ordered it, um, it said that it had like patchouli and rose and um, it actually didn't really list out everything. Um, but I'm just going to tell you what I get here. Yeah, okay, so, hmm. Hmm. I would have to be in the mood for this. And it gets sweeter as it dries down. This is heavy on the patchouli, like that earthy kind of patchouli. And the rose is a cold rose. I have no idea if that makes sense. I know the bottle is blue, but it's not because of that bottle. 